Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the Blade Showcase for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And today we're going to be looking at Electra. Electra is one of the four rare shield hammer blades, and she definitely serves as a very solid pick for people that want to get into the tanking role. Part of the reason why is that if you give her the dilation chip, uh, which you can get as your reward for beating Artifice Ophion, then opening up the bulkhead in the World Tree. You will get 10 of these 10 dilation chips, and this ir uh, these chips are the best chips that you can possibly get for any tank that requires blocking. So in this case, it'll give you a 78%. She's tied with Poppy Alpha as having the highest block rate in the entire game, and she uses it very, very well. So that's essentially what sets her apart in comparison to the other big shield hammers. In particular, um, Finch tends to be more leaning towards the offensive side of the spectrum due to the fact that she has a chance to reset cooldowns with a 20% chance. As well, Cassandra has some nice self-heals very all around. Doesn't have the highest block rate, but she can still make use of what she has due to the fact that she has a good time uh, getting the aggro. So for this particular one, her passives are largely similar to Cassandra's minus the self-heal. Instead of a self-heal, she will have the counter-attacks for ether damage, which can be really useful because you're always going to be taking the aggro anyway. As well, there is Zappy Girl, and for an unspecified amount at level 5, you get an increase to your aggro every second, which can be quite useful. It's a very simple task to hold aggro, which you'll be seeing in today's demonstration, due to the fact that the Shield Hammer weapon class comes with a skill that increases aggro. I highly recommend maxing that, up, that one out first, due to the fact that you increase it by 100% chance. And of course, there's Clangy Girl. This works in conjunction with already her established niche, the fact that she has the highest block rate in the entire game. Now, in terms of her specials, they're actually like leaning towards the offensive side, but depending on how you play, you may or may not get a lot of use out of these, particularly due to the fact that topple and launch timings tend to be a little bit strict, especially when it comes to launches, but if you are used to using characters like Wolfric, or you like to build your team around using driver combos, then this might be something you want to consider. That being said, her level 3 combo was actually very very good, mainly just due to the fact that it's kind of your emergency cooldown. You want to build this up, and then if you see that you lost aggro, you definitely want to hit this button so that you can get that aggro back. Again, she doesn't have that much trouble holding aggro, but there will be times where you want to ensure the aggro is going towards you, and you'll see exactly why when I show you the Ox Core. Unfortunately, she only has one, but this is one that she uses the best at, in comparison to all the other characters. So. She already has a 78% block rate, but then you also have, upon block, a 50% chance to completely annul all damage. This is extremely useful that even though you will get hit by a knockback, like, let's just say, I don't know, um... Yeah, like, let's just say a big knockback attack hits you. It'll still knock the driver back, but no damage will be taken. This is extremely useful and something that you definitely want to have on Electra. You can get this from Arc Mark 7, who's at the top of the world tree. So, before I go to the demonstration, I also want to show you the driver that we're going to be using today. Currently, we are using Nia, and she is outfitted with um, one HP increase for the mod, as well as a Cosmos, but it's mainly just for healing purposes. We won't be using her that much today. The accessories that she'll be using will be the Resurrection Symbol, mainly due to the fact that she's really, really good at staying alive due to the high block chance, and when it does come time for us to actually use our... Uh, chain attacks, then I'd like everyone to be present at the time. Galaxy Cube is very good on a shield hammer due to the fact that you have a good time holding on to aggro, as well as constantly having your arts readily available every single time. Now, for the pouch items, it's pretty standard fare here. It's 24 damage dealt by the specials, which I like to have all the time anyway, as well as recharging arts by 0.3 each second. There are higher values, feel free to go along with those ones, but Along with the Galaxy Cube, though, you won't have to worry too much about waiting too long for your arts to come back. So, I think that should basically do it for the primer. So we're gonna go ahead, cut the video, and I'll see you guys at the demonstration. Alrighty, so here we are at the Garmat province. We're gonna be fighting against a immovable Gonzalez. He's one of the um, one of the higher level uniques that you will be facing early on in your progression through the game. And one of the more notable drops is the Winter Knight chips that give you the Orichalcum weapons. So the first thing that you want to do is just use the Elephant Press on Nia uh, to increase the aggro up. It's also an AoE attack, but because this is just the one guy, we don't have to really worry about that. 
one thing to note is that in order to effectively use this tank, for whatever reason, there will be times where he would spontaneously switch targets. So currently I do have the Elephant Press on hand, but I'm going to be using it relatively frequently this time around, whereas I'm going to be like cancelling out all the other ones. Okay, so I got hit with the stench. Usually the stench would do a lot more damage, but due to the fact that we have a relatively relatively high defense, again, the I have a 24 HP increase, or sorry, 24% HP increase. So I'm kind of just conserving my I'm kind of conserving my cooldowns right now. I'm actually going to switch to Cosmos, give myself a heal. What's going to happen for today's showcase, due to the fact that this is one of the easier enemies we'll be fighting for these videos, I'm going to create one elemental orb. One elemental orb is all we really need, and then after that we're just going to have a lot of fun with this boss. So, I'm going to quickly switch, work through my cooldowns, work my way back to Electra if I can, build a level 3 combo, because this is the one that will give me back all the aggro that I lost as a result of switching to Cosmos. I also just position myself a little bit to the side so that most of my allies will attack his left arm. Okay, so yeah, now the aggro's back on me, and you know what though, I'm going to have to make another play for that again. Hang on. Oh yeah, okay, so one of the annoying things too is that this guy has the stench. One way to sort of get rid of the annoying stench ability is to make a water orb, but unfortunately we don't have that right now. Best way to make a water orb is usually just, yeah, three waters or or two light or um two light element combos and then one water element several combinations water is one of the easier ones to get okay so again just kind of saving my saving my cooldowns a little bit it only takes about like two or three auto attacks to fully restore my ability it's really really quick so there we go there's the damage immunity that we were hoping for we're gonna kind of just draw this fight out a little bit the the damage output of all my allies is quite nice and i can reliably keep aggro off of them using Electra, thanks to the fact that I have the Elephant Press. And if ever something does happen, if I ever do see that he suddenly has aggro off me, I have a level 3 combo on my hands that I could easily just get ready to use. Now the thing about this particular encounter as well, there's like those big AoEs that are very annoying and that prevents the blades from coming close due to the stench. The best thing I can say is, if you're at a very low level, I recommend, again, just conserving your meter for your level 4 combo so that you can power your way through them. Otherwise, though, like, a character like this, actually, really, to, to clarify, whenever you are fighting as a new kind of boss and you want to learn how to fight them, it's best to be playing as a healer because you're, you're going to be more likely to keep your party alive and see what the mean tricks that this guy has or playing as the tank, considering that you're kind of up close and personal. So again, I lost the aggro due to the fact that ether cannons can absorb aggro really, really quickly. An, a little idea could also be to have a ether cannon outfitted onto your driver, so that they would be able to, um, be able to get the aggro just like that as well. I'm going to try to reposition myself, because I think, I think this particular boss is actually more likely to... It's actually more likely to get aggroed if you're attacking him from behind, so I'm gonna see if I can make it so that he's attacking from the side. Yeah, well, like you'll actually have noticed that a lot of bosses do rely on the positioning in order to show how the aggro works. Unfortunately, the game doesn't do a very good job of teaching that, but there will be times where you'll find that your attackers will end up taking a lot of damage when you're playing as a tank. It's not because you're necessarily a bad tank, it might just be the fact that the programming of the boss just happens to be like that. Still though, we've been getting a lot of damage immunity, again, just mainly due to the fact that, um... Just mainly due to the fact that this Ultimate Shield ability... Electra uses Ultimate Shield the best out of all the blades in the entire game. And for anyone that's, like, trying to get into a tank, and she, if she does happen to be the first tank that you get, most of her personal quests actually take place inside of the, oh, it's called Torgoth, Torgoth Town. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna see if we can get a heal. If not, I, I put two healers on Rex. He should switch, but there's times where he just re outright refuses. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he has a Boreas and a, Boreas and an Ursula, two of the best healers in the entire game. Okay, so we got the topple here. We might as well just make use of this. I did say earlier that most of her abilities, or sorry, most of her specials, you wouldn't get the full won't get the full benefit of their attacks due to the fact that the timings are a little bit a little bit sluggish when it comes to the uh, the shield hammers so 
I would only recommend doing that if you, that's the kind of gameplay that you want to do. If that is your kind of, uh, if that is your preferred style of gameplay, though, then far be it for me to discourage you guys from that. So there's gonna be a Venom Cloud. He also has an annoying Venom Cloud burst, constantly be looking at the uh, the bottom of his health bar before things would happen. I could theoretically just press the plus button and finish the fight off right now. Let's see. Actually, try to reposition myself here. Yeah. So as long as like we're both in front of him. Like, he will get hit if he does another... Sorry, Zeke will get hit if he gets... If there's going to be a wild wave. But I'm just going to quickly just use this attack. And we're going to... Do you want... Well, let's make it so that we're at the... At, at the beginning of the second M in Immovable. And then that's when we're going to use the special. Because I think that should be more than enough to kill. Part of the thing, too, about these tanks is that... Um, like, the longer you stay alive when you're doing these when you're doing your um, your super bosses for the first time, or even like, or your uniques for the first time, look at all that damage we were able to mitigate due to Electra's high block rate. When you're fighting them, again, like being a, a tank really, really does help, just due to the fact that the whole point is to stay alive. And honestly, for most people that are trying to beat them for the first time, I recommend going for the playstyle of just kind of memorizing the roots. Like, they, they do have the guide in the upper right corner to show you which combos you need to do in order to get a certain kind of orb and yeah like yeah it's just you better follow that one kind of build your team accordingly and then just build up as many orbs as you can because of the um because of mithra's ascended form when you use mithra's mithra's ascended form you can essentially just one shot all the bosses in the game with a single party gauge all right so yeah we, we actually over overstayed our welcome here so we're gonna go ahead and he is weak to electric so that's gonna be great for us electric is gonna go on and go first. We also have Harold on our team, but the thing about Harold, um, yeah, she's one of the best for a chain attack as well. I highly recommend for anyone that's like, even if you haven't beaten the game, or you're on your way to beating the game, I, I recommend looking into getting Harold as soon as possible, just because she's such a powerful unit on all on her own. Arguably one of the strongest units in the game as well. And that's kind of the thing though, like Electra is a completely random blade. People that get her early on are in for a good time just due to the fact that it's really easy to, to tank. The only problem though is that like out of the entire cast of playable drivers like only Tora and Morag are going to be the people that would serve traditionally as tanks but then they're they're kind of unique cases which is kind of funny like I, I feel that shield hammers could be a little bit stronger just a little bit stronger just to make up for the fact that like you're going to be using them you're only going to be using them at the uh, at the expense of being an attacker unit, or at the expense of being an attacker type driver, such as Zeke or Rex. All right, so he still has just a little bit of life on him. We might as well just um, spend the rest of our time here. Well, I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna quickly try to grab some aggro again. That chain attack really made Harold draw a lot of aggro for Zeke, didn't he? But yeah, that's basically Electra though. She's very, very safe. An extremely safe pick for tanking. That, that being said, the shield hammer overall is pretty safe. They, they they kind of make up for what they lack in the damage department for reliability and, I guess, sustainability. Like, there's no heals, but as long as you have a good healer on your team, then you're essentially going to coast through most of your battles. Anyways, guys, thanks very, very much for joining me for this, um, this little demonstration, and as usual, I will see you guys at the next showcase. Take care, everyone.